Today is the claw machine build part two. We're going to get some things moving around. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, we're working on the build series for our candy claw machine. And remember, this is the second iteration. Both are available over on GitHub, but make sure you're building this one. It's just a little cleaner, there's a lot less parts involved. Now this one was Halloween themed. I know you're watching these videos much later, but this was for a Halloween party we had at the house, so that's what the color scheme is all about. You can make yours however you wish. But today we're going to get things moving around. We're going to focus on X, Y, and Z, putting all the carts together, lining things up, getting our belts and motors together, everything that you're going to need to move that claw around and make it a whole lot of fun. So let's jump right into it and see what all of this is about. Now when printing these parts, I do recommend using PETG and maybe using four walls just to make sure they're pretty tough, maybe 30% infill. Some of these will be holding motors, they might get just a little bit warm, so you're going to want that extra heat resistance from the PETG. Just a side tip. Alright, let's get to it. So to get us started, we have our 530 millimeter extrusion that we cut earlier in the first video. We're going to have to drill some holes. This is probably the most challenging part of this whole build, getting these holes in the proper locations, making sure they're centered. Now if you have to do this by hand, it can be a little rough. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. It would be best if you had a drill press or at least some kind of guide to help you get these straight. These holes need to be 56 millimeters in from the edge. And I have created a jig for you to use to be able to tell where that is. So here's the process I would go through if I were you to get these holes drilled. So you can use the jig, slide it into your extrusion, and that's going to give you the spot that you need to drill. The first thing I would do is drill a three millimeter hole all the way through. Just drill it with this in place. You might want to print out a couple of these just to make sure they're the right size after you drill them. You should be able to drill it with this on, no problem. Then after the three millimeter, I would move up to a five millimeter. I've made a couple of examples just so I can show you, but with that three millimeter hole cut, when you go to do the five, that three millimeter hole is going to be a guide for the five. So it gets you up to a five millimeter hole. Then I would move up to a step bit. And this is the hole that you would want to drill with the step bit. I'm using this style of bit. It goes from four, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12. But the five millimeter hole will guide the step bit. You can take the internal hole down to eight, and then you're going to need to cut some of this outside extrusion to 10 because we have to be able to fit the head of the screw inside here. At 10 millimeter, your cap head screw is going to fit in there nicely. So three different steps to get that hole drilled, but you need one on each side of your extrusion. You can see here the finished piece that we're going to use. Now there's a couple different ways you could go here. For this build, I'm going with an M5 by 45 millimeter cap screw because I'm going to go all the way through the extrusion and then hold on our wheel cart. This will make more sense when we put it all together here in a moment. But you wouldn't necessarily have to go all the way through the extrusion if you wanted to. If you would prefer, you could drill the other side. You would still have to drill a hole all the way through so that you could use your wrench, but then instead of this going all the way through, you could use a button head screw. You'd need to cut out some of the extrusion right here to allow for the head, but it could be a much shorter screw and you wouldn't have to drill near as big a hole. Either method would work. Again, I'm using a 45 millimeter cap head. You would probably need something like a 35 millimeter button head if you wanted to go that route. But for this build, we're going to go all the way through the extrusion. So after you have your holes drilled, now we'll start building the Y carts. We'll build the X cart here in a moment, but here's just the hardware you need for the Y carts. So to start with, you'll need some M5 by 10 millimeter countersunk screws. You need four of those. You need two M5 by 45 millimeter bolts. I talked about these earlier. They go all the way through the extrusion. You'll need four T nuts. Again, I'm using those roller type. You'll need two nylock nuts. This is for the adjustable eccentric nut part. They go on the 45s and then four regular M5 hex nuts. Now for the V wheels, this whole thing does run on V wheels over the extrusion. 
I like to buy these in kits. The kit comes with the bolts, the wheels, the spacers, and the eccentric nuts that you need. Pay attention to the kit that you get. Not all of them come with the hex nuts. Mine did not. But everything that we're using from the kit here is four M5 by 25 millimeter screws. We have the six wheels that we need, four aluminum spacers, and then two eccentric nuts. I already mentioned the hex nuts that we'll be using. The hardware for the X cart will need three more of those V wheels, an eccentric nut, and two spacers. Remember, I did buy these in kits. You'll need two M5 by 25 millimeter screws, an M5 by 35 millimeter screw, two hex nuts, and a nylock nut, M5, and then two more of those countersunk screws. These are M5 by 10 millimeter. Okay, so the assembly. I'm going to show you this a piece at a time so I can show it just a little bit more clearly. Let's start with the left side of the machine. You're going to need the Y cart that has the end stop on it. I have made these parts so that if you mount these flush with that extrusion, the back of the part, that should make the hole that you drill line up. So first off, we're going to take a couple of M5 hex nuts, put them in our printed part. Then we take one of our M5 by 25 screws, goes through the wheel, then through one of the aluminum collars, and from the bottom of the part, it's going to thread into that M5 nut. There's one, we'll repeat that for this other side. And this is going to run on the Y extrusion, remember? So it's going to go on the bottom of your extrusion, just like this. So we're going to load a couple of T-nuts here in the bottom. And then we'll flip our cart over and we're going to use our countersunk screws, M5 by 10s, to attach the cart. Just leave it a little loose on there for now. Remember, make it flush with your extrusion. Then from the other side, we can run our M5 by 45 through the extrusion, through the cart. Then our eccentric nut will go on and fit in the hole in that part then our other V will go on. And on this one, you want to use your nylock nut so that you can leave it just a little bit loose so you can still adjust it with that eccentric nut. Once that's through and it looks good, you can go ahead and tighten up these countersunk screws. You will need a ball ended wrench to make that a little easier. And there's really no need to snug this one up yet. You get to it from the top. Just put it on a few turns we're going to have to adjust it when we get it on the machine anyway. And then we'll move to the other side. We're going to repeat pretty much the same thing, only that side is a cart that holds the belt. It doesn't have an end stop on it. So again, load up your M5s, M5 by 25 through the wheel with a spacer, put it on the part. Same for the other side. Then again, on the bottom of the extrusion, a couple of T-nuts. We'll attach it with our countersunk screws. And then our M5 by 45 through the extrusion. Eccentric nut. That lip of the nut fits down in the part, just for reference. Wheel. I like that. We'll worry about the hardware and the belt when we get it on the machine. There's a little bit more we have to do there. Let's go ahead and move to the X cart that sets in the center. It's very similar to the Y cart. Put our M5 nuts in here. It goes on the bottom of the extrusion so it can support the claw. M5 by 25 through your V wheel into your spacer onto the cart. Same for the other one. And on the Y carts, the one with the end stop, that goes towards the back of the machine. So for the X cart, the side with the belt on it, these two posts right here, I put that towards the back. So in relation to that Y cart, it goes just like this. And before you put this on, you have a couple of countersunk screws that attach into your Z motor mount. So we'll want to put this on first. And I didn't list the hardware for this, but all you will need are those two countersunk screws that I told you about before and a couple more M5 hex nuts. 
So you can put your hex nuts in the Z motor mount. And then this notch right here on your Z mount goes towards the back of the machine. That's just to allow for that end stop to be loaded. So the same side as the belt would go onto your cart, just like this. And then your countersunk screws will come in from the top. And then you're ready to put your cart on. Now you could do this before, before you put the Y carts on so you could slide it on. I usually just cheat and leave that third wheel off, just mount it in there, and then put my third wheel on. It's just as easy to do it that way. But with this one, you don't need that super long screw. You've got an M5 by 35. So you've got your screw, your V-wheel, and then your eccentric nut will go in the printed part, just like before. Wheel assembly goes in, and then nylock nut here on the bottom. Again, you can just leave this loose for now. We'll tighten them up when we do the belts and put it on the machine. But now this assembly is ready to go on the top of the frame. So I'm going to lay the machine down so I can show you how this works. This is the back of the machine. This is the front of the machine. But the Y, again, I said that end stop goes towards the back. So we're actually going to flip it over. So the whole assembly will go just like this. And again, you could go ahead and pull the frame apart and just slide this on. But I usually just cheat leave the wheels loose, slide it on. Just don't nick the wheels or anything, loosen them up quite a bit, slide the whole thing on, then tighten them back up. We got one side, and we'll do this other side over here. On this side, I just took one of the wheels off, slid it on, and then we'll just put the wheels back on. You can go ahead and snug those wheels back up. And our carriage is on. It should slide nice and smooth. We haven't adjusted the eccentric nuts yet. We'll get all that done right before we put on the belts, but we're starting to move around at least. Now we need to set our motor location and our idlers so we can move all this stuff around. Now we're gonna move on to the X motor and the Y motor and all of its idlers. So for printed parts, you have an idler for Y and an idler for X. Then you have the X motor mount and the Y motor mount. You'll need two NEMA 17s. It really doesn't matter for these two which ones they are. You don't have to have a whole lot of power to power the machine, but get something kind of in the middle. I believe these are 38s, maybe 40s, don't remember. Doesn't really matter, they came out of my scraps bin. You will need two M5 20 tooth idler pulleys to build it the way that I do. Pro you could probably use other ones if you wanted. And then two 20 tooth drive pulleys for the motor side, M5. This is all GT2, by the way. Then we need eight M3 by 10 millimeter screws for attaching the motors to the mounts. We're gonna need eight M5 by 10 millimeter screws. That's for attaching the mounts to the frame. We're gonna need one M5 by 30 millimeter screw for the Y idler. And then one M5 by 25 millimeter screw for the X idler. You could probably use longer if you had one. I just tried to go with the one that fit. We need eight T nuts, the roller type like we've been using three M5 hex nuts, a handful of M5 washers, just to stick in there to make sure the idler is lining up correctly, and two M5 nylock nuts. We can go ahead and put our motor mounts on now. I'm just gonna use those M3 10 millimeter screws. This is the X. The motor shaft faces down when it's mounted. We'll see that in a minute. So there's X, and then the Y motor. This shaft actually needs to line up with the extrusion. So from the top of the machine, the motor actually sets like this. So I want the tabs to be on the corner of the extrusion, the back one and the right one, and then the plug to run to the left of the machine because that's where the main board's gonna be. So it mounts on there just like this with your M3 by 10 millimeter screws. It'll make a little more sense when we put it on the machine. Then you can go ahead and put your drive pulleys on. No need to snug them up yet because we will have to adjust them a bit. And then we can build our idlers. Now the Y idler is the longer one because it does have to reach down there again, upside down on the frame. So the two end stop bumps will go up. It mounts on the frame like this. I'm gonna put a washer on my M5 by 30, put it through the slot. Slot gives us a little bit of room to adjust. Put another washer on the other side and then lock that somewhat in place with an M5 hex nut. Now the spacing on this kind of depends what pulley you use and how long a bolt, 
But for my setup, I'm going to go ahead and throw another M5 nut on there and then my idler pulley. Then on top of that, I'm going to put my nylock nut on. This gives it a little room so we can adjust it up or down to fit our carriage. We just want it to be in line with the belt. And then pretty much the same thing with the X idler. We're going to use our 25 millimeter bolt. No need for washers on this side. There's no slot. This whole thing can move to adjust tension. And I'm going to lock it in place with the hex nut and then throw a couple washers on top of that just for spacing to get that idler down far enough so it lines up with the extrusion correctly and then your nylock nut. Now we can put it all in the candy machine. Now I've designed the Y motor so it goes on the right side of the machine. So over here, I'll put the idler on first because it's easier to see. Those bumps for the end stop go up so it fits right here. So we'll just put a couple of T-nuts in the frame and use our M5 by 10 millimeter bolts. Again, the flat spots on the printed part will line up with the edges of the frame and we'll just attach it. So there's our idler wheel. Again, they're underneath the frame. And I'm just going to clamp our carriage out of the way so I can show you. But our motor goes down in the bottom corner. So again, the pulleys have to line up with the extrusion. That's where the belt is going to run. So that pulley is going to face down and it's going to set right here on the frame, just like that. So we'll put a couple of T-nuts in the extrusion, one here, and then one on the back side. And then we can attach our motor with our M5 by 10 millimeter screws. That was in place, now we can move to the X motor. So I just put the idler on the left side of the machine. I just want to make sure that idler lines up with the groove on the side of the extrusion, because the belt actually runs inside there. But again, we'll put two T-nuts on the end of the extrusion and we'll attach our idler with some M5 by 10 millimeters. And there's no need to snug that up yet. We need to move it back and forth just a little bit to tension that belt. But you can see what I mean about the washers. You just want to put the right amount in there to shim it so that that pulley will be in the center of that extrusion. Again, the belt's going to run through there. And then we'll mount our motor on the other side again couple of T-nuts. The pulley is going to be facing down, just like this. Wire comes out the side. M5 by 10 millimeters. And our X motor is on. Now we can go ahead and move to the belts. Now for the belts, we're just going to use regular GT2 belt. The Y belt is around 9 centimeters, and the X is around 12 centimeters. That should be enough. They should give you extra length that you can cut off. More than enough for that. You're going to need a couple of belt blocks. The Y and X are different. The X don't have hex holes, the Y do. So two of each of those, four M3 by 10 millimeter screws and four three millimeter hex nuts. So you can go ahead and put two of those hex nuts in your block holder for Y. There's those two. And then the other two nuts actually go on the X carriage. So we'll put those on. The nuts actually fit in the back here. I like to just put the 10 millimeter screw through and kind of grab it so that I can pull it into the part. Taking this lower wheel off might help out quite a bit. But you can usually get it in there. Here's the X cart removed so I can show you where those nuts are located. One on this side. and one on that side. And with the cart off, remember this is the back of the machine. The belt will actually come in from the extrusion, just like this. And then you'll take one of your belt blocks and use that to go through into that M3 nut and sandwich it in. And then on the other side, we can go ahead and put that block on. It should be fairly easy to put it in there after we've tested the length of the belt. But we'll go ahead and get it started. Cart's back on. We can run the belt over to the idler side. Remember, it's going to kind of set inside the extrusion and then just kind of snake it underneath the cart in that extrusion slot. Then you can pull it through over to the motor side, back down and under, 
and slide it underneath the block on the other side. To get an idea for the tension and how long it needs to be, just loosen this side up and use this as your tensioner and just push it in. No need to get carried away with tension. Slide your belt in, go ahead and tighten up that block. You can go ahead and cut off your excess. Then we'll take our 10 millimeter wrench, adjust that eccentric nut to make sure the cart is nice and tight on the extrusion. We're good there. Make sure the motor and idler pulley are in the middle of the extrusion so the belt runs nice. Tighten up those grub screws. There's a look at the idler side. And then you can tension up your belt. You don't need much tension at all for this machine. Just with one finger, pull it back a little bit, tighten up those M5 by 10 millimeter screws into those T-nuts, and you'll be good to go. And for the Y belt, I think it's actually just a little bit easier to install but the belt is going to catch on the teeth on the back of this Y carriage. So M3 10 millimeter screw from the front here. I'm just going to go ahead and attach my block loosely and then we can slide that belt in there. And I'll go ahead and put the block on the bottom one down here as well. And again this belt is a little bit shorter around 9 centimeters but the teeth face the inside of the machine so we can just slide one side underneath that block just like that. Then we can tighten up our screw. These don't have to be super tight. That should be more than enough to squeeze it into place. And then we can run it over our idler up here. And then it's going to run down past this side of the cart. Then we'll come down and we'll hook the motor. And then we can come back up to our Y cart. And even if you have excess, we've just got that belt block on there loosely you can just slide it in. And remember there's no need to get that belt tight now. We have our idler up here with a slot. We can tension it up from there. Just get that belt on in the blocks and then tighten the blocks down. I just wanted to kind of get you another angle so you can see how that actually works out. You can go ahead and cut off your excess belt. We'll make sure that our idler pulley and our drive pulley are good. We want it to be running in the center of the extrusion as much as possible. You can add washers or tighten that nut down to get it to line up. Same way with the drive pulley. Just loosen up that grub gear and pull it in and out as needed. Then we can go ahead and tighten up the bolt that holds our wheel on, the adjustable one with the eccentric nut. It doesn't have to be super tight. Make sure it's still spinning, but then you can use your 10 millimeter wrench to get in here and adjust that eccentric nut and make sure it's up close to the extrusion. You don't have to get carried away with it. You just want to make sure you can't spin it freely by hand without moving the cart. That should be snug enough. And we'll move to the other side and do the same thing. Tighten up the bolt and adjust that nut. Once you have your pulleys lined up, your belts adjusted, and your cart's tight on the extrusion, then you can go ahead and tension that belt. I wouldn't do it more than you can push with your thumb. That's plenty tight for this machine and then you can just tighten up that screw. But just lift it inside that slot to get a good tension on it. Then we're in good shape. And before we end today, let's go ahead and knock out a few of the tasks for a Z motor. Again, the Z motor can be pretty standard. For this build, this is a 40. It measures around 39 millimeters. That will be important because we are gonna use some screws through the back of the motor. For M3 by 12s, I've been trying to stick with 10s, but the Z mount is a little heftier, so you need a little longer screw and two M3x40s. Again, these will go through the back. You'll see that in a second. We have a wire holder that goes on the back of the motor. Then our wheel, this holds the string, and then our string is one millimeter nylon string. Just a meter in length is more than enough. This is the string that actually attaches the claw. On the string wheel, there's a hole that runs through the center. Just go ahead and thread your string through there. And I usually just put about three knots in it. And once you've got it tied on, just go ahead and wrap the rest of the string around the wheel. And with our motor, I'm actually going to have the wires come out to the front of the machine. So it'll be in here like this. And then on the bottom two screws here, I'm going to add this plastic piece. So I have a place to tie the wires off for a little strain relief. So I'm going to take these bottom two screws out of the motor. With those out, then you can use your M3 by 40s run those through your printed part, and then those screws will take the place of the ones you just removed. 
We'll slide those through to the front. And now you have a handy place where you can tie down your wires as needed. And then back to the candy machine, remember this is the right hand of the machine over here. You can see the Y motor, but the Z motor is going to come in from behind right here and then you can fasten it down with those M3 by 12s. Again, this is a little thicker mount, that's why I have the extra screw. This hole right here, I just put that in there for something else to wire tie some wires down to. It doesn't go to anything. Once your motor's on, you can go ahead and put your string wheel on there. The string is going to run down this side. This is where the end stop is. There'll be a cover here with a piece of PTFE that it runs through, but you can go ahead and put it on for now. You shouldn't need to take it back off. It does have a key spot that goes on the motor shaft, but you want that string to run this way. Doesn't really matter much. You can always rewrap it if you need to later. But it should press on nice and snug. So that's the end of part two. We got a lot done, but we have a long way to go. We did get some motors on, our carriage put together, everything's starting to move around, and we started working on Z. But before we go much further, we're going to have to work on the business end of this machine, and that is the claw. But that will be for the next video. Hopefully you like this video. I'll see you really soon on the next one.